Uh, okay, I'm not sure if you're... Oh, okay, there it is. We are live. Uh, what's up, guys? This is Dem Keys. Um, sorry about that. My system was a little slow when I hit the start streaming button. And OBS kind of froze, and so I wasn't sure if I was live. Well, uh, I'm sure that I'm live now. So, uh, yeah, uh, we are live. What's up, guys? This is Dem Keys, and today we're going to be doing a little yap sesh. I don't know how long I have. I don't know how long I'm going to be streaming, but uh, I got the chance to stream and I wanted to take it. For the most part, we're just going to be doing yapping. We're going to be looking into uh, a bunch of a bunch of uh, deep learning related stuff. Because over the past couple of days, I've been doing some research and I was like, okay, so... Here's here's where we are at in terms of also I need to keep an eye on the the volume meter or well the decibel meter the thing I need to make sure that the mic audio is not is not clipping uh I I remember in in the last stream we had this issue and I had to turn the thing down from my audio interface I still have no idea what caused that issue um I didn't get a chance to look in. Oh God. Okay. I think we are having some frame rate issues. Let's just give it a second. Let the thing stabilize. And then hopefully we will be good. Let's just, let's just give it a second because I don't want to, I don't want to talk because I feel like the audio will also cut out if I, if I talk in this situation. But I think, I think, I think, I th nope. Okay, we are not, we are not good. Because the thing is still showing. Okay, I think, I think now we might be good. Let me just, let me, let me see what this sounds like on stream. Actually, no, wait. The music is going to come through. Actually, let, let me, I'm going to mute my mic real quick. Uh, and then immediately I'll unmute my stream so I can hear it and so it doesn't come through on the mic. Uh, give me give me a couple of seconds. All right, I think I think we are good. Yeah, uh, the connection is also stable by now, so we should be we should be good. Anyways, so I have been over like you know the past month, not, well, oh, over the past year since I've been trying to get into um, doing you know data science and machine learning and deep learning and all. I've had this thing where you know I wanted to learn various prerequisites. And to a certain extent, that was true that I needed to learn those prerequisites. Um, one of one main set of prerequisites that I absolutely needed to learn, and I'm glad that I spent the time learning it, was uh, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. And I'm glad that I spent the time learning these because learning these three libraries has benefited me in many ways than just um, machine learning or deep learning related stuff. It has benefited me in a lot of different ways. And I got to learn a lot more through just learning these. I, I benefited in more than just the AI way. Let's say that I benefited in, in it benefited me in a lot more than just AI related things. Uh, but yeah, those prerequisites were definitely important uh, regardless whether you're getting into data science uh, into ml or specifically deep learning uh, those three prerequisites are definitely very important um, but i also wanted to learn various machine learning related things um, stuff like first of all linear regression that's something that like i've 
taken so long. I've admittedly taken longer than I should have to learn this this one thing because I kept doing it on and off. Uh, but like I'm slowly making progress with that as well. Uh, linear regression was one of them. Um, there was uh, something to do with classification. Something, something to do with classification. There, there were like so, like with with classification. Also, there's like various different methods to do it, and that further branches out into multiple topics. So I kind of started getting lost each time I would go into that I would kind of start getting lost within that and then deep learning is its own separate thing deep learning is a it's a family of machine learning it's a subfield let's say of machine learning would, would family of machine learning say, or I guess saying saying it's part of the machine learning family yeah so it's it's a field within machine learning that focuses very heavily on neural networks. So once I got into deep learning, I was like, okay, now that I'm learning this, maybe I should learn those other prerequisites, those other like basics before I move forward with this. But then recently it occurred to me that maybe I could just move forward with this and then do the other thing on the side as well. Um, Cause I realized that with with deep learning, it's very heavily focused on on the use of neural networks, different types of neural networks, building different neural net, neural network uh, architectures. So, I don't think I need to concern myself too much with like a lot of machine learning specific tasks. Instead, I should focus more and and uh, ML related concepts not just tasks but rather i should focus more on deep learning related concepts because there's a lot of stuff that's going to come up and there tends to be a bit of an overlap between ml and deep learning uh in terms of like concepts which is fine as as they start coming up i'll i'll keep educating myself on uh the various concepts more and more but yeah it occurred to me that maybe i should i should start getting into deep learning like i, I should move forward with deep learning rather than waiting to learn the basics within ml itself so i can start learning deep learning and do the ml stuff on the side i feel like that that would be a better approach and i would be making a lot more progress in that way because with deep learning itself like there's th there are ways to just just get into deep learning just like how do i even say this there are ways to get into it without having to go and learn a plethora of of fucking ml concepts first there are still like i said there are a lot of like ml concepts that that do come up in deep learning but i don't need to learn like the whole batch of deep learning uh, of ml uh, of, of machine learning uh in order to get into uh deep learning at least that's what I've noticed. Then again, I'm a beginner in both ML and deep learning. So, I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think I'm wrong about that. Because there's a lot of material that I've seen that that is teaching deep learning and it, the way that it progresses, the way the way that things, the way that I've seen things going in those, in those tutorials, it kind of seems like it's it is its own thing you there's going to be a bunch of different concepts that you're going to come across uh, a lot of them are also like specific to neural networks so like quite a few of them might not even like be connected to machine learning but like i said there tends to be an overlap between the two uh, but yeah okay um i've decided that i'm going to i'm going to start getting into deep learning i've i've kind of already gotten into deep learning to be honest like i've uh over the past couple of months every now and then i've i've done research on various deep learning related topics and there were those uh, mit lectures as well which i'm gonna re-watch those videos because those videos are actually great um as hard it, as hard as it is for me to watch tutorial videos because of my concentration issues uh, those videos are actually packed with 
a decent amount of information relating to various uh, deep learning related subjects. So you have stuff like, actually, I could I, I could probably bring it up right now. Give me a second. Let me real quick. Let me switch to the BRB screen. Also, they have like a they have a updated version of it from what I remember, because the last time I looked this up on stream, it did show up. There was a, actually, I, I could also show you guys right now. So it's a good opportunity to show you guys. Give me a second. Um, what, what was I going to do? I was going to look at pi. Oh, MIT, MIT. Oh, fuck. I just completely lost my fucking train of thought. about what I was going to do. Okay. So, uh, there was one in 2023 and then they updated it with a 2024 version, which I'm super happy about. Um, give me a second, let this thing load up and then I can show you guys so you can look into it as well. So what I plan on doing is, um, in this, in this, okay, hold up. Let me just transition back. Okay. So this is the website. Um, the website covers like the various like course topics and stuff. So this course, it had videos, which were the lectures, but it also had, um, it also had lab material for, for practicing, which is great. It's, it's awesome. Uh, for me, I'm, I'm going to have to find a way. I'm, I'm going to have to convert this code to, PyTorch code, because from what I remember, they are using TensorFlow specifically in their examples. But once I've understood the concept of, you know, whatever we are currently practicing, once I've understood that concept, I think I should be able to reproduce the examples in, in PyTorch. It, it shouldn't be that limiting. Uh, there'll be a bit of Googling to do. Uh, okay. Here it is. So it says uh, 2024 edition is here. So, oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's read the brochure. So this this thing has already taken place, but the the course material and the videos, the lectures and stuff, they are online, which I'm super happy about because like this is what's giving us this material to to learn. You know or this is the reason why we have this material to learn. I watched a bunch of the 2023 videos. I'm going to rewatch the thing again. Uh, I'll, I'll rewatch the 2024. Well, I'll redo this. I should say that I, I'll redo this, but this time I'll watch the 2024 videos. Um, at least that way I'll be able to like, you know, compare the two and see if there's, if there's a bit of a difference between that time and, and this time, because dude, you've got to understand like, the the past year or maybe i should say the past two years but let's say the past year has been crazy for ai and ml and deep learning it has been insane like things have progressed insanely they've gone so fucking fast it is crazy the amount of progress that has happened so things can change even in one year, which is why I want to see if there's a difference between that video that I watched and the one that I'm going to watch. Uh, speaking of the videos, uh, here it is. So we have lecture one, lecture two, and then there's the, the lab thing. I, I didn't look into the lab, uh, but the lab was mentioned in, in the lectures. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to convert that code to PyTorch, which should be an added like challenge for me. Um, then, okay. So basically they have two lectures and then a lab, two lectures and then a lab, and then two lectures and then a lab. And what different topics am I seeing here? Transformers was, Transformers is definitely gonna be mentioned in one of these. In the last one, I remember it being mentioned in, I think it was in the same, uh, in the same lecture where they covered convolutional neural networks. 
I don't remember. But yeah, uh, I'm going to go through this. I'm just going to open this video up real quick to show you guys. Uh, also, I'm glad that they have the slides available. So if uh, you guys want to look at the slides that are being shown during the lecture, then, you know, it's it's there. Uh, give me a second. So anyone who's watching the VOD, the... Actually, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to play the audio, anyways. Oh God, what did I just do? What did I just do? Why did that double click? I didn't mean to double click. Okay, anyways. Uh, where was I? Yeah. So this is this is the video. And this is the entire playlist. I believe this is now pointing to the 2024 version. Yeah, so this this was... Uh, yeah, it says... Uh, I, I like that they mentioned new 2024 edition. That's actually helpful. Okay, so this is uh, the playlist that I'm now going to be going over. And it seems... Oh, you know what? Dude, it's changed. Yes, it has changed. Because... <clears throat> Now they've uh, added transformers into the recurrent neural networks section. Oh, was I was I remembering wrong? Because okay, I want to I want to look at now. I'm curious because I, now I'm, wait words. Hold on. Now I'm curious. Um, and I want to look at the old playlist. Where is the old playlist? Would it be on this person's uh, on this person's YouTube channel? I want to look at the old playlist and see if I'm remembering right or, or remembering wrong. Right, so this is uh, this is a 2023 version. Uh, hold on. Shout out, shout out to this person and uh, and. Um, the other person here as well. Where, yeah, shout out to, actually, not just these two people. There's a bunch of people in these lectures. I shouldn't be saying shout out to these two people alone, but like there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of people who have uh, given these lectures. Shout out to, shout out to these people, man. Oh God, what did I, what did I just click? Okay. Hold on. Um, so this this is 71 videos. Let's take a look at the playlist and see if... Wait, does this also have some... Oh, God, why does this have 71 videos? There's not that many videos in this. Oh, because it's inclu it, it includes the old one as well. Oh, shit, dude, I'm remembering wrong. Okay, so Transformers was mentioned in the recurrent neural networks chapter, not in the convolutional neural networks. Okay, my bad. My bad. Yeah, yeah, my bad. Okay, so, uh, either way. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad that they're covering language models here. Because, okay, language models is also something that I want to look into. Actually, I'm going to look into. But before looking into uh, large language models, LLMs, I need to learn the concepts of NLP natural language processing because i feel like it's there's there's going to be a lot of concepts there that are necessary if i'm going to be building my own large language model from scratch um so i kind of want to learn i kind of want to go back and learn the basics of of actually that there's no go back i don't think saying go back makes sense here because i've never learned nlp to begin with uh but yeah i want to learn nlp that's that's also something that i have on the list uh, and at some point, both NLP and deep learning are going to like come together. And that's going to be where I'm able to build the, the large language model, the, the LLM. So I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that they have a video on this as well. I'm excited. I'm excited about this, but I'm going to restart whatever I'd learned. Um, in this first video, from what I remember, they, they start with the basics, which is uh, a feed forward neural network. 
and then in the next one they go into something more more complex like a uh, recurrent neural network then they go into convolutional neural networks and uh, various other other types of um, deep learning related concepts and also like with each of these they also talk about training the the neural network not just not just running a pre-built neural network but like how you could build your own and then how you could train it and what are what are the various techniques you can use so uh this is what i'm going to be focusing on i've also been for the past couple of days i've been um i've been going a bit hard on rust and i've been doing a bunch of like practice programs i'm almost done with with doing that i i think i'm satisfied with you know the, the there's like two more things that i, I want to implement uh, one is a stack and one is a queue. I've so far I've done a bunch of examples and I think I think I'm gonna upload just just like for for just as as my own time capsule kind of thing. I'm gonna upload all of those examples with my very fucking beginner rust code. I'm gonna upload it to GitHub as as like one one module with sub modules that that can be imported to to run the various examples um so far i've done off the top of my head there's the palindrome counter there's uh prior to that there was something else as well i don't remember like there was something else string related but like i don't i i i did that i finished i think it was a word counter yeah i think the first one was just a word counter and yeah even that like it taught me a fair bit because like each of these supposedly simple uh topics supposedly simple concepts they end up teaching you a lot about the language because you don't know jack shit about the language right you don't know how to how to solve problems in the language yet if you're new to the language that is and you know in my case i was new to rust specifically so um if you're new to the to the language then you're gonna you're gonna run into problems and then you're gonna have to solve those problems you're gonna have to find solutions to those to those problems and that's gonna teach you about the language so that's the whole idea with doing these simple examples so even though they are supposedly simple examples um implementing those things can be surprisingly com complicated for you as a beginner in that language so yeah okay i had the palindrome counter then i had um the fibonacci sequence and then i had a factorial thing and there was one more in that in that in that list there was one more example what was it there was a there was there was definitely one more no no there was definitely one more i i remember cuz one of them it became surprisingly complex to implement in terms of loops cuz i was trying to oh wait no that was a sorting yeah that was the, that was a sorting thing so i don't i don't remember what the third math related thing was but yeah there was a fibonacci sequence generator there was a factorial thing um and then there was uh sorting algorithms so i did a i did a bubble sort and what else then i moved on to games so i i created a, a guessing game then i created a tic tac toe game. I'm actually super proud about the tic tac toe game because, like, that that was that was great because it divided. Um, it it divided the the logic into three, or it divided the workflow, the flow of the program into like three sections. We had user input, and then game logic, and then rendering. All three of these were like different sections, and they all did like different things. Uh, or at least that's the way I set it up. Um, so yeah, I did the I did the tic tac toe thing as well, and in the past two three days, I think I finished implementing a to do list as well in in Rust. That was interesting as well because like even there there was there was a loop kind of thing because uh, you take user input you process it and do whatever operation has to be done based on the input and then you render the the table right <clears throat> so 
So even there, we had these three sections, um, and it was, dude, it was it was great. I'm gonna I'm gonna clean the thing up a little bit, or well, not not clean it up, more organize it, uh, organize it in in into different like sub modules, uh, and then it should be callable from uh, the main Rust file. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been busy I've been busy doing Rust things for I would say the past week I think I don't remember when the last time I streamed was. Let me just let me just check my video producer. I also haven't uploaded my. I've been missing I've been missing out on uploads of the vods. Right, so I had my last stream was five days ago. Yeah. So, um, I guess close to a week. The, the, the days just got away from me, dude. Like, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I wish it wasn't like that, but like, it just, it's a thing. I keep saying that I want to do the, I want to do the mute stream thing, but like, I just, my, my mind just gets distracted and like, it's whatever. So, <clears throat> uh yeah like like i was saying i'm i'm gonna be i'm gonna be going heavy on uh deep learning now we're, we're gonna we're gonna be doing a bunch of deep learning related stuff and i'm super excited about this because there's there's tons of material on this there's tons of uh advancements happening right now so things are changing constantly there's gonna be lots of stuff to to learn um, who knows? At some point, maybe I might be able to uh, start implementing models after reading like white papers and stuff. That's also something that I want to I want to try doing, though it's not always the easiest thing to do, because if it was, then, you know, everyone would be doing it. But like you do require a fair amount of knowledge, uh, especially like when when you're looking at a certain uh ml or deep learning related uh technique that has been published um i don't know what better word to use technique or concept or whatever but like when somebody has published their their work re-implementing that work isn't necessarily always the simplest thing to do you require a fair amount of knowledge the great thing is the whole idea with the white paper is that it's 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 supposed to explain things to you uh, it's supposed to explain how this thing works. There's also, I, I believe it's also supposed to, uh, I don't know to what extent this is true. I was about to say that it's also supposed to prove that this works, but I don't know to what extent that's true. I don't know, like, uh, if, I, I don't know what the what the rules are in academia about, you know, uh, how white papers are supposed to be written and what they're supposed to include. Um I don't care to be honest about what what the rules are. I'm I'm just happy that people are sharing information through these white papers. So, at the very least, the white paper is gonna is gonna explain to you how to implement. No, it's gonna explain the concept of something because I uh, I have seen white papers where they don't necessarily actually you know what it's they don't really show you how to implement it. I, I've been saying implement that's the wrong term to use. <coughs> Give me a second. I need to. I need to hydrate. I've been just talking. I woke up a short while back, and um, I immediately started streaming. I need to be hydrating. Um, I wasn't sure how long I'm gonna stream, but like, I'm glad that I made it to half an hour. You know what? Uh, give me. Actually, give me a second. I need to step away for like two minutes.
All right, I'm back. Dude, I was about to say, all right, welcome back. Though, I mean, technically that wouldn't be wrong. Oh, shit, dude. I forgot there's an ad break coming up. <sighs> okay, uh, so there's going to be an ad break in like 30 seconds now. So I'm going to start the ad. I completely forgot about this ad thing. Otherwise, I would have just waited for the ad break. But um, it's fine. It's a 30 second ad. So no big, no big deal. Uh, yeah, I'm going to run the ad now and I'll see you guys in 30 seconds. Okay. In the meantime, while that ad finishes. Uh, what else was I going to show? Oh, maybe I should close this so that it's not. taking up too many system resources. Um, maybe I can close this as well. All right, welcome back. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to be, uh, I plan on, I plan on Wait, actually, I said that already. We were talking about white papers. So, uh, with white papers, I kept on saying, I kept on mentioning implementation. <clears throat> they don't show you the implementation. It's up to you how you implement it. What they explain to you is the concept. They explain that that's a whole that's the whole idea with the paper. They explain the concept. At most. They might show it to you in terms of pseudocode. Uh, I don't. There might be papers that do include uh, include code in them, but I mean, okay, yeah, it's it's kind of silly to to you know make a ge generalization there. Um, maybe some do include, but at least the ones that I've read, they don't always include code. I think one of the reasons they don't always include code is because that same concept, that same technique can be implemented um, using multiple different languages. And in these languages, there might be multiple different libraries that can be used for that. Taking, taking, um, taking Python alone as an example, you would have two, two of the biggest, currently biggest, uh, I want to say deep learning frameworks, but I don't know if if they are also machine learning frameworks, so I'm going to say uh, two of the biggest uh, deep learning frameworks ri right now are PyTorch and TensorFlow. I don't know too much about TensorFlow, so like I can't say for sure if it mainly focuses on uh, deep learning, but I, I believe PyTorch focuses more on like neural network stuff. So it's it's more it's more deep learning. Give me a sec. Okay. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So in in the papers, they usually explain the concept and they will explain the math behind it. Uh, that's definitely something that they show you. They will explain that there's going to be tons of math in there. There might be pseudocode in there. There's definitely going to be like uh, flowcharts to explain how things work. But this is what I mean when I say, like, they don't show you how to implement it. It's up to you uh, how you want to implement it. <clears throat> but what they do show you is how it works, essentially. They, they explain the workflow. They explain the math behind it. They explain a bunch of the, a bunch of the concepts that have to do with that model. Um, they explain how that model is meant to work. And then it's up to you how you want to implement a working example of that model. So uh, at some point, I do want to do that as well, but that's like very, very far away. It's not going to be anytime, anytime soon. Because um, I'm still, you know, taking my first baby steps into, into deep learning. So that's going to be a while later. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think LLMs would be like a nice, a nice big, project 
for me because, well, for one thing, LLMs are also, you know, the hot new thing right now. What did I just hit? Oh, I hit the space key. Okay, yeah, they're, they're also the, the hot new thing right now. So um, just like everyone else, I'm also interested in it. But there's also something about LLMs that's, that's I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of, um, give me a second. Okay, yeah. So there's there's something kind of kind of tempting about trying to trying to build one myself for a specific purpose. Cause you got tons of tools out there that can um that can build LLMs for you. You've got services that offer entire like frameworks that you can use to create your own LLM without like any code at all. You can you can set up an LLM for a specific purpose, but well, I'm a programmer, so I can code. So I'm I don't need to use those. So I I kind of want to build the thing from scratch. Of course, use using libraries, not like you know implementing literally everything from scratch. But I I wanna I want to build an LLM myself. And I feel like before getting into that, I, I mentioned this before, like I need to look into NLP as well. There was this library that we had found when I was trying to uh, find ways to um, anonymize the data in one of the sales data sets that I had. Uh, we did end up finding out about Faker later on, the Faker library, and then I went with that. However, I'm glad that I found the NLP library. What was it called? I think it was uh I think it was NLTK. NLTK. NLTK natural natural language toolkit. Wait, I'm I'm also seeing Rust here. Is there is there a Rust implementation of this? Uh there's a Rust-based natural language toolkit. Uh this integrates various existing python written nlp toolkits for various text analysis and rust based in rust based uh, applications okay great awesome i'm definitely going to look into that later on dude even in even in rust i've been looking into uh data science and deep learning related things uh i found i found a couple of libraries so there was um, there was Linfa. I believe Linfa does a bunch of like stats stuff for you. Or even it probably even does like ML stuff, but like there's there's tons of like stats stuff in there if you're looking to do stats stuff. Let me just confirm this so I'm not giving out wrong information. Uh, Linfa is a comprehensive toolkit for statistical learning, providing algorithms for optimal model and density estimation. All right, yeah. So, uh, Linfa Linfa does provide you with like a bunch of stats and ML related things, uh, but there's also other toolkits like uh, there's one called Burn, which is uh, it's essentially like an uh, an ML toolkit written in Rust. So, if you have like various ML, so this is not like specifically. At least this is what my research has shown. Uh, with Burn, Burn is it's a more general purpose ML toolkit. You're not limited to just deep learning related stuff. And then there's another toolkit called Candle, which is uh, supported, and I don't know if it's also developed by them, but like it's supported by Hugging Face. I believe, I believe it's also developed by Hugging Face. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, hold on, let me just, Yeah, so um, it's uploaded to Hugging Faces account. So I, I believe, I believe they are the devs, or, or devs from Hugging Face are uh, the ones making. Dude, I don't know. I don't know who's who's uh, building it really. So I can't, I can't say for sure. 
but yeah, uh, there is there is a framework called Candle, and it mentions that it's a minimalist ML framework for Rust. Uh, but something that my research has shown, at least like from what I've read from other experienced people, a lot of people are saying that yeah, you can do ML stuff, but like if your if your focus is mainly deep learning, then Candle is it's uh, it's decent for that. You can you can do the same thing in burn as well but like they they both they aim to solve different problems they don't they're not both aimed at solving the exact same problem so um when you're trying to compare the two you should take that into account as well oh dude something else i want to show you guys i think i've shown this on stream before as well there's this tool and i i hate the fact that the tool doesn't show up in Google search as easily when I try to look for neural network visualizers. This is an amazing tool. I shouldn't have led with like, I hate the fact that, because it sounds like I was about to say something bad about the tool itself. No, the tool is amazing. Uh, so the tool is called NNSVG. Uh, this is a neural network visualizer. You can visualize three different neural network architectures. Uh, there's... Um, I believe this is fully connected neural networks. Then there's Lynette style, and then there's AlexNet style. So these are these are all different neural network architectures, and you can you can customize the. Let me let me, let me just let me just zoom out. So you have you have this, and then you have. Uh, give it give it a second. Then you have this. And then you also have uh, this one, AlexNet, which is actually like in 3D. So these are these are great for like convolutional neural networks. These two are great for convolutional neural networks. Uh, I don't know if FCNN works for convolutional neural networks at all. Uh, I'm gonna have to learn more on CNNs to to be able to, you know say whether that's the case or not but just to show you that that you can actually control look at this this is crazy dude i i believe you can also add more layers so you have you have your uh, input layer your hidden layer uh, another hidden layer and then the output layer right so this is your this is your basic um feed forward neural network and you can increase the amount of hidden layers as well. So I can do something like this. Wait, where is... Hold on. Then this becomes a hidden layer, doesn't it? Oh, shit, I forgot about this, dude. I completely forgot about this. You can click on, you can click on each of the nodes and it, it kind of shows you what the thing is connected to. Okay, uh, wait, back up. I was trying to... So... Right. So the very last one becomes the output layer each time, right? So if I add something here uh, and I increase this... Oh, guys, okay, Um, real quick, I need to end the stream. I hope you guys...